I seriously need a better filming position. Not enough space. Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. So today folks, I had a pre-order come in from Tony Webb from Venomous Visions and it's something not seen very often in the hobby. Now, I know of at least two other YouTubers that do own these, but that's it. So if anybody else does own the same animals that I'm about to show you today, please comment me below, because I'd love to see all your different setups. Now, what I have in here, I can't pronounce, let's give it a go, is the Megacephala euphratica. Dunno, but it's a species of green tiger beetle. Now, I'm not going to just sit here yapping to you on the screen. Let's have a look at these guys and I'll also show you later on the really weird alien type enclosure that I've sorted out for them. It's a good one. So, by removing the lid, don't escape. Oh, I really don't want you on my hands either. Please stay in. Here are the species of green tiger beetle. Now these do not come up in the hobby very often at all, so I was very, very fortunate to get my hands on these. Oops. Now as you can see, very, very active guys. Well, I don't know the sexes of these. Very, very active beetles. The other just hiding away in the shade. Now, although we can't appreciate these guys very well just on a piece of tissue, I do not want to bring them into Kimura Bee because they're small, they're quick, they're agile, and I don't want to lose them. But here you are, I've taken out a strip of the tissue just for you guys to admire it. Now I will get better lighting on these shortly, but you can already see that awesome green coloration with that almost kind of oil effect coming across the back there of a multitude of colors. Now if I move on to the one remaining in the tub, you can see just about when you're gonna focus those mandibles. So these aren't really guys you want to get chomped by. I don't know a huge amount of information on these. Tony has provided me an awesome little care sheet, but I want to learn about these as we go. So with information online being quite slimming, we're going to kind of work with what we've got and the info Tony's given us, and then don't run, don't run. And then I think the best course of action, oh, for goodness sake, and then I think the best course of action is to live and learn by these. So we can do future videos with things that I have learned about this specific species. Because it's very different me telling you information I've been provided by others and me telling you information that I found out through myself. And that's something I do like to do on this channel. But unfortunately that kind of thing does take time. So every time I get a new animal, I can tell you kind of what I've learned already. The only animals that have got a lot more experience in keeping and can give you the full info just by what I've learned would be the phasmids, the stick insects. But this is how we learn. This is how we learn within the hobby. We get something new with research done and then we learn for ourselves. So I think what I'm going to do guys is I'm just going to show you the cool idea for the home that I came up for for these. And then we'll film them inside the actual enclosure where hopefully we'll get better angles and better lighting. Oh look, you having a groom? Got itchy legs? <laughs> oh look! Bless him. So I've made a mess of this tissue here. Let's try and do this one handed without getting uh, chomped. Let's just twirl it round, pop it in. Yeah, you're king of the hill, I can see that, but I need to pop a lid on you. So please, go down, down, down. Are you going down? Yeah, cool. Sorted. So ladies and gentlemen, I have crafted this enclosure for these beetles. Now unfortunately, I misinterpreted the amount of sand I've got, and this is nowhere near deep enough for these beetles. They do require at least around the five inch mark of substrate for them to be able to burrow successfully so this is in fact just a temporary setup but i wanted to play with ideas ideas that i could use to expand this when 
I have a deep enough substrate. So I've put more sand in for order. Now I'm choosing to use sand because they are from a hot arid environment. That was recommended from Tony to use a sandy clay sort of style substrate, but I don't have excavator clay and he has given me an idea of which can help these guys burrow. And that is to wet down the sand with a spray bottle so that when they form their burrows, it tends to hold in place. So thank you for that top tip, Tony. But I wanna show you what I have tried out in this enclosure and I'm not sure whether it will work or not, but I think it was a cracking idea, if I do say so myself. And I can think of so many more uses for this idea. I'm really excited to share it with you. So let's take a look. So with an additional light on the top, here was the idea. So to damp this down, they will make their own burrows. There is no need for what I've added here, but I want this to be a trial run. So what you can see here are the tubular parts of an old courgette plant. So we have been growing courgettes here within my home and the tubular sort of branches from these I thought would make excellent hides, especially when they fully dry out and are no longer completely green. So they have slight spikes on them, which is okay for beetles. They don't tend to get snagged, unlike teas. But I was thinking I can half tube them like this or leave them full like this and let them burrow inside. So could you imagine a burrow, say for example, in this one, and it ends up going real, real deep down below? I think that would be excellent to just see an invert's head pop out from these sort of tubular hides. Now my idea when it comes to things like teas is to give this a try for smaller tarantulas but shave off the sort of spiked edges because you don't want a tarantula to get snagged on a spike because it could well be the end of them. So for experimental sake we're going to leave these to completely dry out over the course of the next few weeks. I will come back to this enclosure and I will show you what these tubular retreats look like, whether they've browned in colour, whether they still hold or just break. And then we have a whole idea for a set of hides for a lot of smaller inverts. At the back of the enclosure I have one more tubular part that comes up higher just in case anything likes to climb. And at the back here, this was an old coriander plant. Now it's pretty much dead, which is why I've put it in here. I've just planted it in the back of the sand and I want it to dry out completely, die out completely and have that sort of dry desert plant life feel to it. So let me know in the comments below what you think of this design. As I said, this is temporary till I can fill it higher with sand. And the best idea is, if they do actually decide to burrow within these tubular retreats, I will make them a much better scaled home, much, much deeper with a lot more of these for them to choose from. And I think it would be really, really epic for us to try and see which burrow entrance they're gonna come from. So we've got one. Oh, and he went straight in. So let's see where he goes. Dun 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 dun. Oh, stop going where I can't record you. Look at those mandibles. Look at that. Trying to fight his way through. Probably confused why there's a clear layer in front of it. Can you imagine being gripped by them? An alien type beetle in an alien type enclosure. She's probably feeling a little uncomfortable on the damper sand, but that's fine. It's a warm day, it shouldn't take long to dry. Now while Dopey there is trying to break through the invisible barrier of doom, let's go find its counterpart. Where are you? There you are. Let's see if we can get this one to come off. Like so. Oh, instantly going for the digging look. Look at that. Didn't even check out his surroundings. It just instantly felt the sand and felt the need to dig there. That's incredible. 
It's quite unfortunate the tubers, as I'm going to call them, are not being used. And obviously they've only been in here a matter of seconds, they may well change their mind. If I find that these tubes just get annoying, of course I'll take them out, but I think the idea is pretty funky, so we're going to leave them there for now. You never know, they might make uh, a few little burrow entrances. I just find it really interesting that this guy or girl here just instantly wanted to dig. There was no moment of scouting your surroundings. You know, typical survival techniques, really. I just still find it odd that this beetle just decided to suddenly dig without... Uh, even scouting its surroundings, unlike this one here, who has better lighting on so you can have a better look. This one still just sat against the plastic there. I'm curious to see if this one makes its burrow near the front. They're well good though, these, aren't they? Look at that. And the second one is back at the digging. Oh, it's biting onto the tubular plant. Perhaps it's trying to form its foundations, or perhaps it is hungry. Shall we chuck something in and see if these guys will take to it? I was going to put a little pot of mealworms in here, but I have some waxworms that need eating, so maybe we'll try one of those. It might be a little bit big for these. Oh, look at that grip! Nope, oh, fed up. Off your trot then. Right, let's find ourselves these waxworms. Okay, the original is starting to dig now. Let's see if I just... Oh no, he went in the tubular part. Cracking throw, if that's what I actually intended. No matter, we've got plenty of these. We can try another one. There. He's got it, he's tackling it. Oh my goodness. I know wax waxworms are soft and gooey, but my God, look at that. Is he actually just chopping the whole tail end off there? That is impressive. For a little beetle, that strength is impressive. We haven't had any gunk come out, so I don't think he's quite pierced into the flesh, but he is squeezing the life out of that. I'm sure it won't take long before him to actually get through the body of that waxworm. Oh, oh, what a shot. What a shot we've got here, folks. My goodness. Nom, nom. You get into a thinner bit of end there, dude. Is he making his way through or is he just going to the... Easier part. Oh, I don't know. Shall we see if the other one will take to something? One is. Oh, wait! Yep! Yeah, we've got it! We've got it! Look at that! So, what I am going to do is I'm going to be putting a little pot of mealworms in here. I don't think they should be just feasting on waxworms. But we got both of them feeding! This is what's so cool about other inverts, not just teas, guys. You, you rehouse a tea, it's unlikely to want to eat. You rehouse some other things and they will just chomp away. So guys, I don't think there's much more we can put into this particular video, but I do want some various comments below if you wouldn't mind. First of all, did you like this video? Second of all, do you like the weird alien type setup? Do you think it would work? Do you think maybe shaving some of these down, leave them to go brown, I could use them as tarantula hides? You guys let me know. So this is the courgette hide plant thing whatever we're going to call it these beetles are the green tiger beetles the megacephala euphratica or something similar and yeah i think we're just going to put an end to it here because otherwise you're just going to have me yabbering on oh wait 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 uh, did he get in did he get into the fleshy oh, oh my god oh i can't quite get through yeah there's leakage there's leakage there's guts, there's, oh my goodness. Sam, you're not filming well. I've got the rim, sorry guys. It's, I can't, I can't get the angle right. But as I was saying, all you're gonna have is me yabbering on through these guys eating. Oh my God, did you see that one? Did you see that one? I need to go, I should go, I know I should go. I don't know if I'll leave all of this in the video. Oh look, chompy, mm, mm, mm. 
Mm, that's some nice, that's some nice wax worm right there. Oh my god. Yeah, feel free to end the video if you want here, guys. I just... I can't help but keep recording this. You know that one? He's being a bit more gentle. Oh, we need to take that one out, really. I might leave him in there. They may end up getting to him later on. Nope. You've had enough. So I'm going to continue to observe these guys. I'm going to see... If they dig a burrow, oh, he's having some water there. If I can, if they dig their burrows in or outside the tubular sections, whether they actually do manage to devour these wax worms, or if I should uh, take them out and give them some mealworms. But uh, he's dragging them across. He's dragging them across. He's like, oh, look, dinner for two. How romantic. How romantic. Look at them. Oh, Sharon. Sharon's caring. Oh, you had that one, so I want that one. Give him here. Mmm. Mmm. Right, right, this is it. I am seriously going now, guys. But me personally, I'm going to keep watching them. This is great. So if you want to see what else dwells in the realm, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. That's going to be it from me and these guys. I will update you in the future of how they go. Now, do remember, Tony will not have these on his actual website. There was limited stock, uh, and I had them on a sort of pre-order basis, as I've known Tony for a very, very long time. But hopefully, they may come up again in the future. Mangled worm, mangled worm. Yeah, get the soft, juicy bit. That's it. Mm. See you later, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.